are going to deal about the topic on silk finishing. Before we could get into the topic, we will just see from where the silk is obtained and how it is manufactured. Silk is a natural protein fiber produced by certain caterpillars in order to encase themselves in the form of cocoons. The making of silk is different from that of other natural fibers. There are many steps involved in silk manufacturing. Manufacturing of silk yarns, the silk reel is formed into a silk yarn or silk thread through a process called throwing. It corresponds the spinning process of other natural fibers. The raw silk skeins are sorted according to their color, size, length and quantity and washed it in warm water with soap and doll for softening the sedicin. After drying the skeins, they are placed on reels from where the silk is wound and bobbins. During winding, the silk strands are given desired amount of twist. The strands may be double and then given twist in similar or opposite directions. To get equal demeter throughout the length, the yarn is run through rollers. Many kinds of silk yarns are manufactured by giving different amount of twists. Still, remaining sericin is removed from silk yarn by process of degumming in which the yarn is washed with soap and water for bringing out its natural shine and soft feel. We will see the kinds of silk yarns. There are several types of which the prominent ones are thrown singles. 3 to 8 silk filaments are twisted together in only one direction to make singles. The second type is tram. A single twist is given to 2 to 4 untwisted singles. Trams are used exclusively as filling yarns. Crepe. Individual raw silk filaments are twisted together in one is direction and the other in the opposite direction. They are then twisted around each other in its direction. Organzine, two or more singles having twist in z direction or combined by twisting them around each other in the opposite s direction. Organzine is mainly used for warp yarns. Silk has set the standard in luxury fabrics for several millennia. Silk is highly valued because it possesses many excellent properties. Not only does it look lustrous and feel luxurious, but it is also lightweight, resilient and extremely strong. The strongest natural fiber is known to man. One filament of silk is stronger than the comparable filament of steel. Although fabric manufacturers have created less costly alternatives to silk such as nylon and polyester, silk is still in a class by itself. The origin of silk date back to ancient China. Legend has it that the Chinese princess was sipping tea in her garden when a cocoon fell into her cup and the hot tea loosened the long strand of the silk. Ancient literature, however, attributes the popularization of the silk to the Chinese emperors Shi Ling to around 2600 BC called the goddess of the silkworm. Shi Ling apparently raised the silkworms and designed a loom for making silk fabrics. Silk was originally reserved exclusively for the use of the emperor. Gradually silk came into more general use. Silk indeed rapidly became one of the principal elements of the Chinese economy. Silk was used for musical instruments, fishing lines, bow strings, bounds of all kinds and even rag paper, the world's first luxury paper. Eventually, even the common man were able to wear garments of the silk. During the Han Dynasty, Silk ceased to be a mere industrial material and began an absolute value in itself. Farmers paid their taxes in grains and silk. Silk began to be used for paying civil servants and rewarding subjects for outstanding services. 
values were calculated in lengths of the silk as they had been calculated in pounds of gold. Before long, it was to become a currency used in trade with foreign countries. For more than 2000 years, the Chinese kept the secret of silk altogether to themselves. It was the most jealously guarded secrets in history. Indeed, the reigning powers decreed death by torture to anyone who divulged the secret of silkworm. Eventually, the mystery of the silk making process was smuggled into neighboring regions reaching Japan about AD 300 and India around AD 400. The first country to apply scientific techniques to raising silkworms was Japan which produces some of the world's finest silk fabrics. Other countries that also produce quality silks are China, Italy, India, Spain and France. China was the largest exporter of the raw silk in the early 1990s, counting for about 85% of the world's raw silk worth about $800 million. The next in the line in the world market is India. Finishing of the silk fabrics. With the time and patience, the mulberry leaf became a silk gown, ancient Chinese proverb. Many finishing processes are applied to different silk fabrics in order to improve their appearance, durability and feel. Calendaring and searing is done to enhance luster, singeing is done to make them smooth and steaming is done for raising pile weaves. Pressing and lustring removes wrinkles from the finished fabric. It is done with heated rollers and then soaking in dilute acid to bring luster. One finish that is unique to silk fabric is weighting. The weight of the silk is lost during the process of degumming. The manufacturer purchases silk by weight and to make up his losses, he does weighting of the silk fabric with metallic substances such as tannic chloride and sodium phosphate, iron salt, logwood, etc. Weighting is done during the dyeing process. Weighted silk is less compactly woven when compared to the unweighted silk and lesser silk is used in fabric construction. Apart from lowering the cost of the silk, weighting gives it crispiness, luster and firm feel. After degumming, the silk yarn is creamy white in color. It may be dyed as yarn or after the yarn has been woven into a fabric. After dyeing, the skins are again dyed, run through an equalizing machine similar to a stretcher and then rewound into the form in which they are wanted by consumers and the trade such as spools, bobbins, skins, etc. This completes the process of silk throwing. The silk is now ready for the weaver, the knitter, the lace maker or the embroidery maker. After the raw silk has been reeled into skins or hangs, the most laborious parts of the silk production are completed. That is, most of the work done on the fiber thereafter is done by the machine process instead of by the hand. The amount of hand labor that it takes to produce raw silk is almost incredible and the amount of labor taken after the machine process begin is no less than for other textiles. It has been said that it takes more human labor to produce a lady's silk dress from the mulberry leaves to the finished product ready for the wear than it takes to produce and to build a locomotive out of a raw oats in the ground. More hours are expended and more people have something to do with work. If the laborers employed in the production of the silk were paid as high wages as are commonly paid in the iron and steel industry, the silk dress would cost almost as much as that locomotive. As it is, raw silk production is carried on 
chiefly in countries where wages are very low. At the present prices of the silk, the most efficient workman doing the very best could not earn more than 15 cents per day at this kind of work. Weighted silk. Silk is sold by weight. Weighting is a textile manufacturing practice peculiar to silk manufacturing and involves the application of metallic salts to add body, luster and physical weight to the silk fabric. The reason for adding metals to silk fabric is to increase the weight of the fabric and because silk fabric sells by pound the extra weight increases by selling price of the fabric. Generally, only the finer or more expensive real silks are weighted rather than the less costly spun silk by means of weighting. The manufacturer can increase the weight of the silk by 3 to 4 times. Weighting is done by immersing the silk in a solution rich in tannin, then transferred to iron or tin baths, then washed. Weighting causes the fabric to lose its strength as soon as the weighting is applied. Heavily weighted silks must be made into garments as soon as it is made. Spots developed in the dyes, salt water, perspiration and tear cause spots to be formed which seems as if the silk is eaten by acids and sunlight also attack weighted silk and cause silk to fall to pieces. The silk industry makes a distinction between pure dyed silk and weighted silk. In the pure dyed process, the silk is colored with the dye and may be finished with water soluble substances such as starch, glue, sugar or gelatin, but it is not weighted. If weighting is not executed properly, it can decrease the longevity of the fabric by causing it to lose much of its strength and durability. So pure dyed silk is considered the superior product. Also the metallic salt used to weight silk can cause health risk and problems for some people. After dyeing, silk fabric may be finished by additional process such as bleaching, embossing, steaming or stiffening. In case of wild silks, these are gathered principally in Japan, China and India. There are several varieties of wild silk cocoons, each with qualities somewhat different from the rest. The principal variety of Japan is Yamaimi and the chief varieties of India are the Tessa or Tassar and the Elianthus. Most of these silks are much darker in color than the domesticated silk, the Bombyx mori. Probably because of the differences in the feel, wild silkworms do not always have mulberry leaves to eat. Great numbers feed on oak leaves and wild silks are used principally in the manufacture of pile fabric such as velvet, plush, and imitation silk skin and in heavy or rough cloths such as ponchies and shantungs. While the silkworms of the wild varieties take care of themselves and therefore do not require the constant labor that must be given to the domesticated silks, the expense of gathering is nevertheless high. The wild cocoons must be hunted, trees must be climbed to gather them and much time may be consumed in collecting comparatively few. On the whole, however, because of the poorer qualities, wild silks are worthy considerably less than tame silks. As we see the characteristics of the silk, silk, a protein fiber like wool with a smooth hand is very lustrous and retains its shape well. Silk can take on many different appearances. A raw silk fabric may fool you into thinking that it is cotton or synthetic. The more refined the silk and the smaller the yarn, the more it resembles the look and the feel that we know as silky. 
Silk is the strongest natural fiber and is very strong in terms of tensile strength, meaning it can withstand a lot of pulling type pressure without breaking. This should not however be confused with a wearability or abrasion resistance. Silk will not stand up to the heavy wear that other fibers will. Because of its good absorbency, fabrics made from the silk are comfortable in summer and in winter. Silk creases and wrinkles easily, especially when damp or wet. Some silk clothing manufacturers apply softeners, elastomers and synthetic resins such as Epsia, a silicon containing epoxy cross-linking agent to increase the dry and wet anti-wrinkling and crease resistance performance of the silk garments. With the family of silicon epoxy cross-linking agent Epsia or Epsip and EPTA. This crease resistance occurs because chemical cross-linking occurs between the silk fibroid strand and the epoxy groups. Research by Zaishan Kai and Yiping Yu in Textile Research Journal 2003 January reported in conventional epoxide finishing of silk organic solvents have to be used which may be hazardous to the health of the exposed workers as well as the environment. Chemical treatments are also added to silk to improve antistatic, water and oil repellency, flame retardants, dimensional stability and other wash and wear properties that our easy care culture seems to expect. Textile chemicals have become an integral an important component of conventional textile and clothing manufacturing and textile chemicals also known as textile auxiliaries have two primary purposes to increase the efficiency and lower the cost of conventional textile manufacturing and to create special finishing effects and properties for the clothing. Silk fabrics have poor resistance to sunlight and UV exposure and must be protected from the sun. Draperies should be lined and even interlined may be desirable. Colors can fade by oxidation called as gas fading. If unaid in storage for a period of time, impurities in the air may cause as much fading as the direct rays of the sun. Avoid storing silk fabrics in a basement or attic near a furnace. Furnaces not only give off fumes but also pull fumes and impurities from the other parts of the home. Silk will become brittle and age on exposure to sunlight. Silk fibroing from the silk wall is an ideal biomaterial having biocompatibility, biodegradation properties non-toxicity, absorption properties etc. and has been widely used for sutures and other medical applications. Silk care instructions. Correct care will ensure that your silk products will last for years without losing their quality. A few important rules need to be observed as silk is a natural fiber it cannot be treated as a debonair as synthetic fibers. We should pay a special attention to the following instructions as never spray silk with perfume or deodorant, never bleach silk, never expose silk to direct sunlight for long periods of time, don't spray silk with water while ironing, don't treat individual stains with water. Always iron the backside only, never wring dry. In contrast to the widespread opinion that silks can only be dry clean, silk products can be washed by hand without being damaged. Further, use mild soap or specially formulated silk shampoos. Soak silk in lukewarm water with 3 to 5 minutes. 
If silk is dark or printed, do not let it soak, just quickly wash it in cold water. Gently move the fabric during the soaking from inside to side. Do not wring dry. Handle wet silk with even greater care as it is very delicate. After a maximum of 5 minutes, remove the silk from the water and rinse the fabric with cold water adding a teaspoon of vinegar to completely rid of the soap. Wrap silk in a dry towel to remove the remaining liquid. Use several layers when using dark or printed silks. <coughs> Roll out the silk and straighten it gently with the corners. Iron it. Silk should always be ironed on the back side. It should always be still, slightly moist. Check off your iron settings. Don't iron silk too hot. Always remember that silk is a protein structure. Much like human hair, heat will damage it. Observe these considerations and you will enjoy your silk products for a very, very long time. Thank you.